Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. This is the second part of two videos that I've already done. I did two pours with uh, the alizarin crimson and orange and black and white. That's these. I did three that were in the Alabama school colors. So what I do is I print out the logo on copy paper and then I tape it with wide packaging tape, clear packaging tape on the front and back and then I cut out the logo for a stencil. So here's the one for Alabama. Here's the one. So this is the way that I do it to um, you know, make it kind of simple on myself. I don't have to uh, freehand it, that kind of thing. And then basically I just have to decide what kind of color scheme I want to go with on top of my pour. So I can do just the outline which will make it more about the pour and the logo is just kind of part of it. Or I can really paint it in with the colors and make it really stand out. So I'm trying to decide which way I want to tackle this. But this is how I make my stencils. It's just copy paper and wide packaging tape. I have some really yucky scissors so they're, they're not cooperating with me but anyway. So here's my stencil. Okay. So this will go here over the canvas and the first thing I need to make sure to do is get it centered before I do anything else. So I want to make sure that like this is three inches and that's four inches. So it needs to go up to about three and a half. Okay, so three inches is there and three inches is there. Okay, so that's about the center that way. That's one and a half and that's about two so I need to scoot it very slightly and that should be about where I need it. And then I just use a couple of pieces of the tape just to kind of hold it in place so that it's not shifting on me. And I'll either use a Sharpie or a white pencil. I usually like to use the pencil if it shows up but sometimes it does not on a satin finish paint. So I can't actually see that. I'm just sketching in the outline. And then I'm going to start painting it in. So I'm going to not talk the rest of the time. I'm going to put my music on and you will just get a sped up version of me painting as I go. I'm using acrylic paints and sometimes if I use white that definitely has to be layered up especially on a darker color so that may be the case. I'm not sure yet until I get into it. So that one's outlined. Again I gotta do some measuring.
Okay, so what I had done here is I just used a dollar sponge just from the dollar store. I s slightly dampened it with water, just very, very slightly. And then what I used is a product called Gamvar Gloss Picture Varnish. That's G-A-M-V-A-R. And I do have this in my link under the video as in the Amazon recommendations link. Again, it's Gamvar Gloss Picture Varnish. It is made to go over oil or water-based paints. And the cool part about it is it does not dry quickly like water-based varnish does. So you have some time to work with it. So basically, I just buff it on. I'm not wanting like a super slick gloss shine. I'm just wanting a semi-gloss look. And so it's wet right now and it's super shiny and it will dull just a little bit as it dries. But, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a good way to coat a canvas very quickly. I don't use it that often, but uh, for something like this, it works really, really well. And I'm trying to show you the difference between one that is sealed with a varnish and one that is not. You can see a major difference in the vibrancy of color. That's why I do p tell people if you're using vivid colors or deeper colors especially, gloss varnish will just take it to the next level. It will just make it pop back out. And um, nothing can do it like resin does. Resin is the most beautiful finish of all because it's glass-like and it gives that 3D effect. But besides high gloss varnish, this is a super easy method. It takes very little product. It comes in a small bottle like I'm using and it goes a long way. So this is just a one that I haven't really mentioned before in my other videos and I've been doing this for a year and a half now, the videos of the acrylic pouring. But uh, I don't use it often, but I just thought I'd bring it out today because I had five paintings to do. And after embellishing them with the logo, all it takes is just a quick run around with the sponge and you've got the varnish on them very quickly. It's super easy to use. And then I have three of these that are the Alabama logos. So once again, I'm putting some right on the sponge and buffing it onto the canvas. And I got a little bit heavy on this one, but it still will do fine. It does not take this much actually to cover it. These were 11 by 14 canvases but you see how it goes on nice and glossy and very wet looking. And I have one more that I'm pulling in. And I want you to see the difference between one that's not varnished and one that is with the same exact colors. It makes a huge difference. When people ask if they have to varnish your painting, no, you don't have to, but you see how much more beautiful it looks with that varnish on it. And this product actually gives you quite a bit of time to work with it. And you know, if you want to keep buffing it or you know wiping it in one direction or whatever and it you know kind of self levels on its own it's not oil based as far as you don't have to clean it up with turpentine but you can put it over oil or acrylics that is the super cool part about it i was pulling out a bird painting i wanted to also use it on that bird painting to show you how it brings that black out, but I decided I'd do this third canvas really quick. Another suggestion is if you want to see what your painting will look like with varnish on it, glossy varnish, 
just wet it. Wet it with water after it's dried really well. And a water coat will show you what it looks like when it's varnished with gloss. So that gives you an idea of what something will look like when it's varnished to decide if you want to do it or not. And here I am using the, uh, the same varnish with the sponge. And this was the painting I had posted in, in YouTube um, a day or so ago. It was just a pour that I kind of maneuvered a bit to look like a bird. I just felt like it looked like wings when I did it. So, but that shows you how that gloss will make the color pop again. And here are the, I'm doing one and I'm going to do the other. I did two 8 by 10 dips the other day and they're already dry. I'm not waiting a week or two for them to, to dry up. They're plenty dry. So I am just going ahead while I have this varnish out and I'm going to do both of them really quick. You see the dullness of the one on the right compared to the one on the left. That shows you the difference, again, of this varnish, or any varnish. I usually prefer a satin to a very glossy varnish, just because it shows you the true colors more so than it does with a matte finish. I'm not a big fan of the matte finish. So here I am showing it again, Gamvar Gloss Varnish by Gamblin. This is a four ounce bottle and it has lasted me a really long time. It is in the Amazon link below the video. It just makes a huge difference compared to no varnish. Hey, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I will see you on the next time. Click on the bell on the bottom right if you're a subscriber and click on the links below. As always, you can find all kinds of information. Goodbye.